So now that we are done, we have the front hub already in. This is the new one, of course. But a few, you know, as you know, we just need to align this wheel. It's not, it's not good. I mean, everything is super wobbly. You see, we need to tighten all the nipples, and let me introduce you to my new tool. I was so happy, very happy, because everything works, till the moment I realized that. Yeah. I messed up. Why? Well, basically, I don't know why I didn't think about it before, because I took the distance from this bolt to the middle, thinking that this is the, the middle of the axis. Which is true, because the way is where the spokes rest. However, you need to consider the distance from here to here, not from here to here. So, back to the train bench. So I thought it would be nice to stop here and give you the theory behind this trim bench I had in mind for some time. So I'm going to place a picture right there and I'm going to draw a sketch of the important surfaces in the trim bench. So let's start. Two beams, vertical beams, like this. We also have this one here. The other one should be something like this, right? Section. And now I'm going to draw the wheel hub. This is our famous rod. Oh, my wheel hub, let's say this is the side of the braking rotor. Then we have our wheel hub, start somewhere like here, and then we have a nut. Something like this, right? Then I am going to assume that you will not place any of these two interfaces laying with any of these two surfaces, although you will see later that it will be beneficial for you. So, what would, do we need to do here? Well, this is a wheel hub, then I'm going to say this is my axis, and then important thing to do is, where is my wheel rim going to lay? How am I going to align this wheel rim? And this is the wheel rim. Then, as you have seen, as I'm planning to, my dial gauge is going to be placed on top of this pole here so let's say this is going to be my dial gauge we have something like this probably this is the other arm and not here and this is my probe something like this okay and very important i am going to consider as my reference surface this part of the pole. I'm going to call it A. I'm going to make all my measurements from this point. So, what do we want to achieve here? What do we want to figure out? Well, we want to set our zero here, our figure in which will tell us that we have the correct alignment of our wheel rim. Let's call it zero. So, I'm going to put zero here. That's going to be the distance between this side of the wheel rim to our reference A, I'm going to call it, 
the and how in earth are we going to find this distance i think the approach that should work with many wheels even if they have um, braking rotors or not i'm just being sarcastic is let's imagine we go to the back we'll do it later and we go to the front fork we will tighten the through axle because it, it compresses both sides of the fork a little bit and let's let's take a picture and let's draw it so we have the cross section of our wheel rim these are going to be the two sides of my fork and we will measure them on the through axle I'm gonna tell you in my case it's a hundred millimeters then where do I want my axis to be standing within this interval basically it should be halfway as a good guess as an educated guess should be something like here so this distance here should be equal 50 millimeters 50 millimeters it's barely measurable so let's jump to the other one what's the distance what's the width of my rim I'm gonna draw it tapered because it's it is truly tapered but I'm gonna measure from the tops from the top side and the width of my rim is 24 millimeters. So the distance from one, each of the sides of my fork to the top surface of my rim, this distance here, it should be 50 minus half of this distance, right? So, 38. But, you can see that this surface here that I'm thinking about, this is going to be also in my bench, is going to be my reference A. So, this is going to be my distance. I mean, at least it's as a good starting point in many bikes. Good. Now let's go to the practical side. How in earth am I going to align this? In reality, this is a paper. So we will have two different degrees of freedom in which we will be able to move this dial gauge. We want to move it this way and this way. But we need to keep the position because here in the paper we have the wheel rim is right here and we are expecting that the probe from dial gauge is going to touch here but perhaps the wheel the rim is going to be a little bit on the left or a little bit on the right hand side so for that i was thinking about a device and I, it wasn't inspired by this 90 degree uh, ruler i was thinking about something like this i'm sure you are super familiar with this one And I said, well, what if I just position it here and I can measure this distance from this reference? So for that, I thought, well, why not just making some slots, slots here? I can put just two screws and I should be able to move it through this axis. Let me call it X. So now I can position this ruler here and I can, act, I can certainly measure this one. But I would love to have an interface in which I could position this probe, in, in, in which it could lay or it could rest. So then I said, okay, so let's, let's draw something extra here, a piece of metal here, or I don't know, 3D printing. And let's draw the top view. The top view will look something like this. And here it will look like this. 
Uh, let's omit this part. Aha, this is different. With this one, I should be able to control also the positioning of this gauge of the probe towards the paper. Let me call it. And the vertical one, of course, is, do is done with these little arms our gauge is coming with. So, finally, I should be able to have my gauge here, and then this is my prop, and then this part of my prop is going to be laying here. Of course, this is from the top view. And let's stop here because I will tell you more in a second, if you didn't really get the idea, uh, and you will see it in the bench already. One more thing, and the last thing I would like to talk about. I, I would like to emphasize of on this side and this side being perfectly parallel and this side and this side being perfectly parallel all the time. Why do they have to be parallel? Well, let's assume this side is tilted this way. This is a very exaggerated tilt. And therefore, this rod we have in the middle is going to be tilted to something like this. What you can see from here is, let me extend this one a little bit here, is that we are inducing an angle. Let me call it alpha. This angle, that is also here, will affect our measurement. And whenever you are measuring your horizontal distance, you will actually be measuring a component, which is the sum of a vertical and a horizontal measurement. This is, this is not nice. So, how can we mitigate this risk? Well, let's ensure that the distance from this point to this point and this point to this point are equal. So we get all the, parallel, the required parallelism. And let's ensure that the height of these two holes is the same. So we will have the same distance with respect to this surface here. Why all of this? Well, because when we achieve, we finally finish our truing process, you will see that in this case, probably, I mean, in a DIY bench like this one, you will probably reach, if this is our axis, a difference, okay, of plus minus 500 microns which is nominally one millimeter but plus minus with respect to this central axis axis is going to be 500 microns this is literally nothing and if you also induce an angle here let's say one or two degrees you will have a, the influence of this component is going to be rather huge that's why we need to ensure that our interfaces are perfectly parallel. So let's go downstairs and let's make some measurements. First I always try to have a good working area so it needs to be flat and well leveled because the floor here is very uneven. As you can see here you see it's very wobbly and this freaks me out always. So I installed some adjustable uh, legs let's say so I can just screw them in or out and then I will just create the perfect flat surface we need to have a flat and level working bench so remember it's going to be in this direction and also in this direction all right well here it happens to be good but it's just beginner's luck well I have it almost there this is one it doesn't need to be perfect, eh? just roughly. Two, three, four, five, and six. Second step. You need to measure distance from here to here, and from here to here. Now, I'll tell you there will be a difference. Not because it's done on purpose, just because the wood is not perfect. So, in order to make the gap shorter or 
wider I have different like uh, nuts and also washers <clears throat> so I can make pressure to the inside or I can also create some space using a lot of washers all right uh, I think this is the best method because you have increments of one millimeter but you can 3d print yours or whatever so this is now in 14.5 and if I go to the top you get 14 here so there is still half a um, centimeter that I need to widen these two walls another thing is you need to ensure that these holes here these two holes are the same height and this should be at 37 all right placing the rim in your bench uh, it could be different in your case in my case was this I have this width because of the wheel hub etc that's why I decided to buy a lot of different washers because they are like one millimeter spacing and I can just establish the distance between this pole and this pole also calibrate it because if you remove them these two poles are not perfect no way this is very cheap wood and um, depending on the rim you will need to use more or less washers or spacers you can also 3d print them but I think this is an ideal solution for any wheel I have tested only 28 inches wheel but I think you can also test slightly bigger ones and slightly more smaller ones it all depends on where you do uh, the holes on this side or if you want to make several holes just bear in mind that your dial gouge is always able to measure although you can this one you can place it on the side too it's that's why I like this bench this structure is very versatile I would like to check that this distance here and the distance between the two side, the extremes of these two poles is the same so we have something like 14.5 here 14.5 centimeters here they are parallel all right so as I said before I have tightened the through axle a little bit and I have measured my hub already it's 10 centimeters width so I don't think it's gonna go farther than this so with my measuring tape you can really see here that we have 10 centimeters and now we need to place our little thread or rope a little bit to the halfway so 50 millimeters away from each side sorry and what I also did is I placed a screw here a little bit to generate some tension from the thread so I can see from the distance the perspective and I can see that if everything is going to be very symmetrical you can also do the same by playing a weight all right as you can see I'm gonna use my pencil to point out to the different points I am going to try to align where the screw is positioned to the middle of in between these two surfaces something like this and now you can see how the thread lays perfectly in between the uh, the distance that is created by the two sides of the fork so now we can proceed with the trimming of the wheel again for me as it's the first time I think this is a good guess so probably later I will need to go for a second iteration because I'm a beginner and I will probably have some differences or some error in the measurements you remember about this guy? I think I got a pretty good first version it's right here it suffered from warping so I had to correct it this side here it was a bit wider but it broke due to the warping and also to the heat treatment I, I, I had to perform in order to get a perfectly flat surface here also corresponding with a 90 degree with respect to this face also this slot here is too long it goes too much into this side therefore this loses uh, stiffness and it tends to wobble a little bit uh, no worries, 
second version is already out <laughs> uh, and you can download it um, but yes it's also a bit thicker this one is three millimeters I think the other one is four millimeters and it also comes from all of these design flaws but for this very purpose I think it will just work I'm gonna just use it so how do I start the train well basically I try to get the same feel the same tension in all the spokes once I uh, want to once I get them it's just roughly I mean you don't want to tighten them too much because I just replaced the front hub and you want to leave it like midway so now I will try to calibrate my bench and start doing the, the proper train there are different ways that we can approach this you have the lateral train you have the vertical train and also you have the dish or the centering there are so many videos online about how to throw a wheel that I'm gonna skip it whatsoever. I'm just gonna do it apply to my bench. You can also check park tool videos, they are just amazing. And there is uh, another guy which I find very, very uh, clear. I will leave the link below. But for this very specific case, what I'm doing first is, as you can see here, I am applying a little bit of WD-40 on all the threads so you don't have future issues, especially when you are tightening them, it's very hard or they get stuck and you hear, I think it's clanking noises. Um, then, um, I'm gonna clean it now because I finished already the wheel. I will calibrate my dial gauge meter and the true truing will start. <laughs> In this case, I only have to use one of the arms supplied. The other one is right there. Uh, bear in mind that it needs to be perpendicular to this surface because otherwise you will be measuring components again same reason as before so I placed my ruler at 45 millimeters right here and that's the good thing about these slots you can see through them so you can roughly position them against this surface and I know this is a, there, is, there is a gap here that's why this side but it broke when it was printing and I'm not gonna print the second one that's why for this time you will have to believe me and I will do this. I will push it against this just for today. No problem. So I already did the calibration is eight turns at zero. It will be my zero. So that will be a perfect ring for me. Tools that I'm using for truing. First uh, few turns with a flat screwdriver from the bottom of the nipple and then a uh, spoke wrench. I have finished the truing of this wheel lateral, radial, and also dish. Let's see, I, I think I managed like a plus minus 500 microns here. So in, if you check at this dial, it should oscillate between zero plus five, zero minus five. This is my mark here, let's start. go back here there is a bump here because it's where the rim was joined okay finished so with this bench I managed to do <laughs> lateral throwing radial truing and also the centering or dish i think for the cost it's just mind-blowing sanity check well i just took a piece of thread just put it right where the limit as is and i just put a weight here and let's measure what's the distance it should be 38 millimeters on the outer side of the thread I'm counting here 37, 30, yeah. That's good. Let's go for the other side. Yeah, around 38. Overall, between what we have measured in the trim bench and what in, really, in reality is, let's say also that my methods are not very accurate, there is a difference of around one millimeter. So manufacturing is considered there, measurement errors is considered, also methodology is also considered there. I think plus minus one millimeter plus 
the deviation on your rim so 1.5 around 2 millimeters ish I think that's acceptable for a DIY bench now I am placing the rim tape and in order to keep it just perfectly aligned I just place a pencil here in the, where, the, where the valve should go and also just need to ensure that the uh, tape it's perfectly laying in the middle of the rim finished there we go there is still a little bit of a bump, vertical trim I would say I will do it later, now I'm gonna go for a ride the only thing I want you to check if there is some kind of offset there even though we measured and everything was okay I don't know if this is correct or this is due to the fact that we have the brake disc and this and even I am not really sure, if not I will just correct it later okay I just came back from 40 kilometers ride and I'm happy with this uh, but uh, there is some spog nose coming out from the wheel and I definitely want to correct that offset I'm gonna measure it and re-through this wheel, yay! So, there you go I think it's completely worth it spending a couple hours more doing a fine tuning on this thing uh, Now I measure here just roughly like 2.2 and on the other side I measure also roughly 2 point sorry yeah it's like 2.2 .2. uh, what happens here is uh, I still don't know because I I know from here to here there is a hundred millimeters and I chose the let's say that the, the symmetry axis well I chose the, the middle as my axis for trading this which is was theoretic, th theoretically correct however it didn't show up correctly here and I had to move it two millimeters two inch millimeters so the distance between this point to the edge of the rim should be 40 millimeters instead of 38 on the other side is two millimeters less why please just delight me or show me why because I think I'm just leaving it here very happy <laughs>